Hey, welcome. Thanks for hanging out with us. This is episode 320 of the IT in the D Show. Guests this week include... We're 100 episodes away from 420. Oh, oh, oh. I don't know where that came from. Sorry. Guests this week include <laughs> Marie Graham, Pat O'Sullivan. They're from our friends at Newspire. It is Security Awareness Month. We're going to be talking about programs, how to keep yourself secure, a bunch and a bunch of new hacks that are coming out, and uh, different and how this company is absolutely blowing up lately, and it's they've been fun to watch. Cool. Um, and then we got a whole bunch of stuff going on. South Park's killing it again. Bunch of hacks. Star Wars tickets are on sale tonight. Um, Already bought them. Davey may fire when ready. You're listening to the Podcast Detroit Network. Visit www.podcastdetroit.com for more information. The following program is intended for mature audiences. I'm Wyatt, that's Gary, you're Bob, and you're Dave. This is the IT and the D Show. This is my, my Max Hedrum. And what you're about to witness is one of the most sinister-sounding intros to a trailer to one of the greatest epics ever. <gasps> this is Billy D. Williams. Bob and Dave and I are enjoying a Colt 45 right now. And remember, IT in the D, it works every time. Where do you guys think you are? The Library of Congress? Detroit? Beyond the Sun? Any of those, right? Take him to Detroit. No! No, not Detroit! No! No, please! Anything like that! You will never find the more wretched hive of scum and villainy. Then don't come. Shut up. Hey, guys, it's Time Hog, Bruce Leroy from The Last Dragon. You're listening to the IT&D Show. Hi, this is Christy Swanson, and you're listening to the IT&D Show. Bob and Dave touch my hoo-hoos. Uh, this is Gil Foyle from Silicon Valley, and the only two guys I hate more than Dinesh are Bob and Dave. Suck it, guys. <laughs> What's up, everybody? This is Billy Zapka. Sweep the leg. Listening to IT in the D Show. No mercy. I may have to wipe the beat off. I just dated Kay, the voice of Professor Xavier. Storm. Storm. Come here, Storm. Sit on my lap, Storm. You're listening to IT in the D. Are we at a break yet? Hey, everybody, this is Ted DiBiase, the million dollar man. You're listening to IT in the D. And if you want to get your money's worth, stay right here. And remember, everybody's got a price for the million dollar man. <laughs> This is the ladies' man. Hi, I'm Ernie Hudson, and you're listening to IT in the D. All you nerds out there. Nerds! 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 What is a nerd? Hi, this is Ogre. You listen to a bunch of nerds on the IT in the D? Nerds! I'm a nerd, and uh, I'm pretty proud of it. <laughs> Hey, Detroit, this is Anthony and Michael Hall. You're listening to my buddies Bob and Dave on IT in the D. Hi, it's Count Chocula, and you're listening to IT in the D. What the hell did I do? <laughs> hey, what up? This is Jay Muse, and you're listening to the IT and D show. Snoops to the news. Listen, Muse, Snoogans. This is Scott Stein of Big Pump Pump. The IT and the D show is your hookup. Holler if you hear me. This is Robert Hayes, the Ted Striker to my mother. When I'm not hanging out at my gumbo bar, I'm listening to the IT and the D show. It's worse than Detroit. Is there such thing as a meat hangover? I love my Monday meat steak. Hi, this is Jeremy London from All Rats, and I'm just wondering, how did I go from Hot Floridian and Sex with Brandy spinning to the IT and D show? Hey, folks, this is WWE Hall of Famer Hacksaw Jim Duggan, and you're listening to the IT and the D show. Tough guy, ho! Dig you IT geeks. This is Dre DeMatteo from Sons of Anarchy. You are listening to IT and the D. Skeptical say. Dave is skeptical. Hello everybody, this is Ming Chen from AMC's Comic Book Man. I'm a techie, I'm a nerd, fellow podcaster. My favorite podcast is IT in the D. Hi, this is Kelly LeBrock from Weird Science. So, it's Bob and Dave. What would you little maniacs like to do first? The question isn't what are we going to do. The question is what aren't we going to do. Ludicrous speed! Sir, how you better buckle up? Ah, buckle this! Ludicrous speed! Go! What is up? Thanks for hanging out with us once again and click and play. This is the IT and the D show. We made it all the way up to episode 320 broadcasting live here in Studio One in Podcast Detroit in beautiful 
Royal Oak, Michigan. This is Bob the Sales Guy. That is Dave the Geek. Randy, I do the Twitters, is doing the Twitters. Find us online at itinthed.com. Do us a favor. Give us a like on the socials and subscribe to us everywhere. Fine podcasts are sold. All right, so what do we got? We got... Well, hold on. Heads off to uh, the staff and Augie and everybody over at Whiskey in the Jar. Uh, Dave, you... you I was uh, getting into that. Yeah, no, I was no. getting ready to talk events. No, that's, that, this was an event, post-event, yeah. and you could do new events. Um, but no, uh, every you know, I had worries about parking, uh, Whiskey in the Jar, obviously. Uh, everybody figured it out. Everybody figured it, it out. Was it was packed. There was some regulars there, but that was good too. But yeah, it was packed, and everybody said thanks for having it out here. I appreciate it. And the over under was nine, and we had we beat that at five twenty five. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's fine. No, and it was great. I mean, I don't like, mind being wrong. No, and and whiskey in the jar was like like that's one of those places where I guess it's what we used to do. Like it's you know bring people to like kind of a little out of the way off the beaten path places. Mm-hmm. Um, and and I if I heard it once, I heard it a dozen times. Oh, dude, I I've heard about this place. I keep meaning to get here. Awesome. Glad, it's one of my favorite here. bars in town. Yeah. No doubt. But yeah, but yeah. yeah so, thanks to the staff that you know, Mikey and uh, Augie just hung out for a little bit. But yeah, Mikey, Mikey outdid himself. Great bar time. Oh, it was sir. great. Uh, but so next uh, coming up, we've got Ann Arbor on the fifth, I believe. Yeah, we'll be at Haymaker Public House. Cool, right on Washington. Uh, make sure you vote before you come to the meetup. That is. Oh, uh, that's right. That, that is that is day. Election day. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, the twenty first, we'll be back at Embrew. Sweet. Rah rah. Downstairs. Yeah. Pizza and pinball. Uh, pinball. Video games. And electronic jukebox. Yeah. So hey, um, you know, we Dave and I talk about all the time how we uh, email spreadsheets. We still haven't figured this thing out, but I think we finally did. Um, we we don't know we're we're on all these different platforms. We we <laughs> we don't automate anything. Gmail for this, um, Docs for right. that, Sheets for that, but Dropbox hey, for this. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Didn't I send you the Dropbox link? No. Uh, but hey, growing a business is super hard, especially when you're wasting hours moving data from emails to spreadsheets and CRM or wherever. That stuff shouldn't just, shouldn't that stuff just happen without you lifting a finger? Our friends at Zapier can help. It is the easiest way to automate your work. It connects all of your business software and handles work for you so you can focus on things that matter most. No more wasting time on tasks you know could be automated because that's what they were built to do. If you don't know what they are, check them out. They're literally, they strip the APIs out of literally every app you use, got them to talk. So things like, uh, sales automation, if somebody comes, Bring, comes in from your website, fills out a contact form. It goes right into CRM, triggers all these different alerts. It, when someone buys something if, from an e-commerce site, it'll trigger uh, finance and shipping. It, it, it's insane. Does, it, does it, it come does. with trigger warnings? It does not. <laughs> um, but, hey, do us a favor. Go uh, go to our special link, zapier.com slash IT in the D. Uh, that's Z-A-P-I-E-R dot com slash IT in the D. And, you know, what I just said is scratching the surface. They s- support more than 1,500 business applications, so the possibilities are literally endless. Best of all, it's easy to build the exact solution you need in minutes. No code, no asking a developer. 4.5 million people are saving an average of 40 hours per month by using Zapier. Right now through November, try Zapier for free by going to zapier.com slash IT in the D. That's Z-A-P-I-E-R dot com slash IT in the D for your free 14-day trial. You know, I keep meaning to ask because it's spelled like the sword. Is it Zapier or is it Zapier? Zapier like happier. Okay. I just yeah. I, I, every time I see it, I'm like, is it okay? Zapier, you know, Web 2.0 spelling, right? So there's a silent K and a schwa and an umlaut yeah. somewhere. Yes, and yes. Um, but you know what? You know what? Are our events though, it, it's amazing. Uh, Meetup comes out and says they're going to charge two dollars per attendee, and the the mad coders at Microsoft, I mean LinkedIn, uh, went right. to work, and uh, LinkedIn events is back. Yeah, and and they announced it like they'd never had it before, which was the part that made me laugh. Like you clowns, like we, you, we were using you exclusive until you just dropped it for no reason, and then we had to go to Meetup because right. that was the only available right. option. So and, we have eight thousand members on LinkedIn and like what a thousand on Meetup. Yeah. So we like lost. Half of our traction. Yep. Well, oh, the eighth. Whatever. Eighty-seven point five percent. Thanks, sales guy. Yeah, I, I wasn't going to do twelve and a half percent. One eighth. Yeah, exactly. Do the math. Um, but no, we lost I literally. Was, yeah. It was my understanding there would be no math. I, I did it for you. Uh, no, you know, if you want to be eighty-seven point five percent of our, we lost yeah. our. You know, and who knows who? You know. 
Yeah, and it's and it, that's not guaranteeing that it you know it's crossover. That could have been new people that we picked up that aren't on on LinkedIn. And yeah, because we did, we use LinkedIn events for friggin' everything. Um, and ugh. I played around with this feature maybe because I'm not a group owner, but I couldn't see a way to associate it with a group. Can can group owners create it? Um, events was never associated with a group. Like okay. so, it was so always just you just create an event. Yes, okay. you just created an event. And off you went. Um, it would be better if yeah. they could do that. But yeah. By the way, um, I am going to so come on the South Park. I was. Giggling all day, last couple of days. Over after oh, dude, it was them. amazing. Last they're week, so they're killing it. Um, they're not just killing it. They're going to make about what half a billion dollars on the new streaming deal because they're oh, shopping. Yeah. They're shopping themselves around, which probably won't be picked up in China anytime soon. Yeah, but remember, remember, remember uh, when SouthParkCentral.com had all the episodes for free? I remember. Uh-huh. I remember. Now, yeah, yeah now so someone's not a thing anymore. No, 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 no. It's been a while. I think it's like a clip, and then you got to go to Hulu or uh, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But if you didn't see this week, I'm totally going to spoil alert for you. Um. Basically, they're trashing on the Impossible Burger from Burger King. Which is so um, good, given that we just had all the Hatch Detroit and the vegan folks. Right, right, right. You know, my favorite part, my favorite part, and Randy goes to Burger King, and he goes, it's Impossible Burger. Oh, no. takes a bite, he goes, tastes like shit. And like, the Burger King guy's like, nobody seems to mind. So the whole <laughs> oh no 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 so no so that like that was when Randy started making them um because no in the be- that was right in the beginning when he went to Burger King then he made decided to make them afterwards right and started making them with all of the leftover weed stems like the seeds. And, and, this, and all that <laughs> other kind of stuff and so yeah then it was like he's like oh it tastes like shit takes another bite. <laughs> Not that bad. <laughs> the best part is the t- he's wearing the T-shirt like to promote it. It's Integrity Burgers. It starts this thing. And it's Integrity Burgers. And it just tastes like shit because you won't care. Because <laughs> like, you're going to be high. You could buy them on Etsy, which is great. Like I was, The shirts or the burgers? Yes, the shirts. No. I wish you could buy the burgers. Oh, my God. But like So then the – the the impossible people are like the incredible people in South Park. Yeah. So like he's like I'm a goo man. I sell I sell goo. Oh yeah. I tried to play the whole uh, like I, I couldn't figure out if they were going for like a <laughs> Stephen King character. Uh, but yeah, the, I'm a goo man, and all I do is sell goo, <laughs> goo that can be made into hamburgers, patties, anything you want. I don't know. How they do it every week. Anyway, if you're not watching it, you got to catch up. It's only been like what three or four episodes. Yeah, season. I would say yeah, three or four episodes. It, in so it's far. been pretty awesome. Yeah. But um, what's so when all this madness came out with Cinemax with Comcast, I went. You know, when we had. Comcast in here, and I'm like, you got to fix my crap. This is stupid. Yep. So I got my Cinemax, uh, but guess what? Then all of a sudden, Stars yeah, didn't work, they, and I go, they yeah, they, they moved they stars. moved they moved one into the other. But you're telling me they dropped Stars altogether? Mm-hmm. They are dropping Stars. There was a big to do about it because I guess the new episode of um, Outlander, I, yeah, something was supposed to premiere last night. Um, and yes, was, it was a big deal. There was a whole kerfluffle about it. I and, was kerfluffle. And- Power, I think, is another yeah, popular one. That's, yeah, that's yeah. Apparently, Fifty Cent was was raving about Power, and it was it was the post about that that because people were mocking Fifty Cent about it. That, that's what brought it to my attention. Because well, who doesn't love to mock Fifty Cent? Uh, is he, yeah. I don't know, uh, but yeah. So now, yeah, now they've now they've dropped stars, and and that's a thing. And dude, like again. Is it final or are they still negotiating? Uh, apparently the deal fell through. Uh, and, and so I guess I think it's Who Lions, owned the stars, by the way? Uh, Lionsgate, the movie production company. So I they're guess. not part of the whole conglomerate? Apparently they are not uh, part of the – yeah, apparently they are not part of the whole food chain yet. Oh. Um, and so, I mean, I guess good for them. Uh, but, I mean – all right. No, not good for them what, because how many subscribers they lose. Well, what are they? What are they going to like come out with a Stars app now? Because I mean, let's be honest. Would any of us watch anything on Stars? No, if it's not just in the lineup. RoboCop. I mean, okay, I'll watch it again, but yeah. I'm not going to seek it. No. And then we'll you know, ten ninety nine a month for it. Yeah, right. If it's on as I'm <laughs> flipping through the channel guide, yeah. Well, one of the dumbest ones now is AMC. The theaters are coming out with their own streaming app now. I was actually just noticing that as I was purchasing the tickets for the 19th. Are they uh, streaming new movies? Yeah. Yeah. Really? So no. you can actually buy – So it's dude, you can buy it like through Comcast On Demand. You can get movies that are still in the theaters. Um, yeah, but so- you can't watch like – Not – the the blockbuster yeah. stuff. like a week or two after yeah, it's yeah. a little bit later well and I'm sure this is going to be the same way or unless they're coming up with a, digi- a different digital distribution deal who knows um, I mean and it's twenty but nineteen ninety nine a month for this come on hey you know what you give come me ac- you give me access to first run stuff that I can yeah, no because I, those are supposed to be priced at like fifty bucks back when they were talking about that uh, is, is there a 
discount combination if you're also an AMC A list. I think it's member. called Star or A list. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I don't know. You just don't get free Slurpees, Randy. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, but dude, I mean, how many times have we had this? Dude, Star Wars. This will be the second time this year that I will have been inside a movie theater, and the first time was because I got you know talked into taking my kids to something. Um, I, I don't like movie theaters, or more to the point, I don't like people in movie theaters. So you give me <laughs> access to something that will let me watch first run movies sitting I in my living room. It. I'm in. No, the best one is the uh, Imagine in Rochester because the seats are as big as my couch at home with the recliner. That now that's the experience. They're all like that now. Dude, look at yeah, looking at like looking at the um the the seats as you were picking them. It's like two seats and an aisle, two seats and an aisle. Where did we see Solo where we all crammed together and it sucked? Uh, That's and that's why you're not allowed to buy tickets anymore. (laughs) (laughs) No, because I didn't buy three. It was I buy I bought IMAX. So I'm thinking yeah, number one, you bought 3D. And no, I did not. Yes, you did. They were 3D. Um, that, not for Solo. Oh, wait. No, that was for... Uh, I think that was for... Solo, eight. I bought the bouncy seats with my kids. That sucks. Oh, yeah. Oh, the D-Box? Yes. It was but, yeah. awful. No, so I... It, yeah, I don't know. But yeah, so no, we're, we're, we're going to be there on, on the 19th, good times, which which I think is actually... Well, no, because we pull our event up early that month, so that, that would be the event night, but no, it's not going to be. Um, so the things I loved, um, I loved... Uh, the Internet Archive. Uh, this is one of the stories we didn't get to last week, so if you haven't heard this yet, this is very, very cool. Uh, they released 2,500 old MS-DOS games that you can play online, uh, which is just... It matters to probably nobody other than Bob and I, but there's just so much old, cool content that I remember growing up with. And it's fun. Someone remake or give me the emulator for Leisure Suit I want Larry, Leisure. We've talked this, but give me Leisure Suit I can play Larry. it now. Like, me. Yeah, I'm sure I'll, it's online somewhere. Somebody has to. Um, we talked about that, that the Lucas last Arts? No, 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 no. We talked about that the last time because somebody was talking about doing a reboot of it. Um, I can't remember. I, I want to say it's an independent publisher. That the weird thing it. about that game is like it had this folklore that it was like it was dirty, and it wasn't. But you never really got to see anything. No, right? but you were all like playing this game. Hopefully that you'll see like a boob. Uh, yeah. No, not not even a, an eight bit boob. Yeah. Right? Right? It was just <laughs> it's serious. Yeah. Just like four brick, like four like light eight, bricks eight, and a dark brick. Eight pixels <laughs> in it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it was, but I still want to play it because it was fun as hell. It was. It Is was it? Be- oh, hold on, hold on. Is it SpaghettiOs? In in uh, Johnny Sacco, it, dude, it could be. I mean, it's you know, you gotta uh, got to gotta be careful what you wish for. I mean, you know, how many times have we had the did it hold up conversation? Like it's it it might it might be pure nostalgia and it might be better, but I I'm I'm sure somebody has it out there somewhere. I'll see now there's find it. like games that held up like 1942 held up, Love Galaga it. held up, Love it. Right, there's, there's like some of those like even like playing old asteroids like to me holds up. Oh, I I'd, I'd still play that all day. Do the um, centipede all yep. day. Right, those things are timeless. They'll never, you know. Um, but the some of them are. Yeah. But some are just utter pieces of toilet. Oh yeah, um, I, like I can't. Although I'm telling you, uh, that stupid arcade game uh, that I bought uh, for you know uh, the brewery back in. Oh the yeah, day, yeah. Um, is in my basement. I dude, I I will sit there and play Kung Fu Master um, <laughs> for Fight. hours and and just be perfectly happy. Um, so we love talking about WeWork. So we must continue to talk about WeWork because the chaos and mayhem continues. Can we stop? Nope, not until they die. Um, so not only which well, yeah, if they keep exactly. these things, yeah, exactly. Which speaking of dying, uh, so apparently they have now issued a uh, warning uh, to all of their members because they have twenty three hundred twenty three hundred phone booths that apparently have exceedingly high levels of formaldehyde and other known carcinogens. How does that happen? <laughs> Um, I, I, let's see. I, maybe something to do with the fact that their largest, uh, investor is, uh, owns Asian manufacturing companies, uh, and, and we're probably having them done there. Oh. Just saying. I just, I guess. Well, guess. I, I did read a rumor speaking, that right. SoftBank is taking them over. They're like, and you're out. Yeah. They did a Kenny Powers on them. You're effing out. I'm effing in. Get the F out of my chair. Well, they've put what twelve billion into it so far. Uh, I I don't know the exact number, but I'd because yeah. they'd put round of funding, round of funding, round of funding to bail them out when the IPO failed, and they weren't going to make payroll, and they weren't going to like they had like a month and a half of operating capital. Um, I'd say they own them. Right about now. So I, I, I would say, I mean, granted, it's not like SoftBank's doing all that great with Uber either, but. Uh, today SoftBank offered $10 billion as part of a takeover plan. Wow. Wow. How, how is it still worth that much? 
<laughs> I, see, I, to me, that's an ego play. Like that's that's that that's that guy. Well, that's a not wanting to lose their investment either. Well, I was going to say that they're 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 buying stock after it got caught in half, and they're trying to just hedge their you know yeah. Um, the interesting one. This was to me. This was the most fascinating story this week, and it's going to give a window into the future on how food is done. So, what have you if you've oh. noticed the shift? No one's sitting down at a TGI Fridays anymore. But they're ordering the shit out of it on DoorDash or on whatever app you choose. Um, really? There's people are ordering from TGI Fridays on Whatever. Dash. They're ordering from <laughs> yeah, restaurants. They're open until 2 in the morning. Oh. Uh, well, so, so is White Castle. And you can get White Castle delivered from DoorDash. I'm just so saying. It's not that different. Makes better choices. That's true. So DoorDash. True. Fair point. We always joke that DoorDash doesn't own any of the restaurants, but it's worth more than yeah. all of them combined. Well, now they just got into the ghost kitchen business. So... I got my little crystal ball this out. Is like this a is, Halloween story. Ooh. Yeah, no, this is I. I cut you. This is what I envision. There's going to be these fake. They're going to be like pop up restaurants that don't have that you can't sit down and eat, but you can order them on food delivery done DoorDash. So and like the pizza joint up front, pretty much. You can't you can't sit down and eat there, but you can get pizza and go right. Yeah. Pretty much, but they're going to have like like a food court. You're going to have like forty fifty people in these in these ghost kitchens, mm-hmm. and all their only business is going to be home delivery. I feel like we talked about this a while ago. Like there's a like startup incubator spaces like in Los Angeles and New York where you just rent out space in a giant industrial kitchen for your own little Well, restaurants. look, I mean, that's what... My friend's part... Hold on, Dave. My, fr- uh, my buddy of mine is part of a conglomerate down in Cincinnati where they're doing that. But this was more for food trucks and so yeah. you can have a home. Yeah. It wasn't necessary... And then they have like a, a general seating space so you can like... So they can, you can do pop-ups there, but it right. wasn't necessarily meant specifically for DoorDash. Kind of like the Troy Shipping Company, but bigger with the. But not no, space but not. Or... It wasn't meant for. Well, but, the, yeah. but with no tables. Yeah. Like that was the whole point. Well, you were saying pop up. Dude, space, speaking so. of food trucks, uh, just to segue for a second, what's the what's the place that always had all the food trucks in Ferndale? Fleet. Uh, Fleet. 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 Did you it's read... named after the uh, Enema Kit? Dude, did you read that? <laughs> well, which is appropriate. Did you read the story that came out? I believe no. it was them. Oh no. Um, where you know what? Before I go slandering anybody, let me just make sure that I'm, I'm getting this right. Um, there is a restaurant uh, that apparently has been bouncing payroll. Oh, that's Otis Supply. Otis Supply. Otis Thank Supply. you. Oh, it's across. Really? That's across the street. Yeah. Okay. That's that. Okay. So, so yeah. So yeah. Apparently, like none of the payroll ever clears. Uh, vendors. Uh, vendors. 170 grand in the hole. But that's you know, you had to get hand carved yeah. sliding barn doors from Paris. Dude, that's the crazy shit. Like look, well, the build out on that. Years to build. Yeah. Uh, for everything. Million dollars to build it out, and I love going there. It's a nice space, love it, but you know, not for four million bucks. You're not going to make you know in this business. No way, no, no, no way. I know the margins on food, and they're not they're not that much. Yeah, right, <laughs> right, right. Um, a couple things on the uh, security front that I thought were uh, were not humorous and sad, dude. Equifax, uh, oh, that's you, dude. Humorous and sad. The breach happened because they left a portal with the user ID. Admin and password. Admin. Mm-hmm. Really? Really, Equifax? Really? Someone brought up a really good point at work today, and if you look at their stock ticker, when the hack happened and they then they shit the bed, the stock went down to, like, whatever, the all-time low, and now it's actually creeped back up where it's decent, and now this class action lawsuit's coming to basically drive them back down again. Yeah. Like, But when stories like this come out, when you're admin, admin... Like you, you deserve what you get. Yeah, you really you deserved do. every every single moment. And again, it. you know our anger that I don't hire you, but you have all my shit. Right. You. Um, yeah, I didn't voluntarily give you any of my crap, but you, yet you still have it from all the other. Yeah. You, you won't all. Yeah, and they're so, the worst of all data. No, there's a huge, cl- yeah, huge class action. Hey, hey, Bob, I forget. Do you have the S10? The Chevy pickup? No, the Galaxy. No, I have the nine. Oh, okay. Just checking. Uh, it, 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 in case you're listening to this and you haven't heard yet, um, the Galaxy S10, uh, if you're using thumbprint, uh, to unlock it for identification purposes, um, yeah, they, they admitted today that there's a bug in any, any thumbprint will unlock it. It doesn't have to be yours at all. I any was thumbprint. just, it's any, any, any thumbprint will unlock it. It was the what, cause the, I think what it didn't a woman use her left, then her right, yep. then ask her husband to it, and it opened up. Uh-huh. And, and then they. stems from her using a gel based screen protector on the screen. So thumbprint, apply screen protector, 
Screen protector interferes with reading the thumbprint, detects the ridges in the screen protector as the thumbprint, and just unlocks. So this is as good as the old Windows 7 facial recognition unlock, where all you had to do was hold up a photo of someone it's to unlock it. It's even worse than that, since any thumb will do it. That's that's amazing. That's you see now, a photo. Yeah. That's one of the reasons why no thumb, no retina scan. No. I'm fine punching in my stupid six See, digit code. I just, I, I always go back to Demolition Man. Like, I, I get, I, I no, I, I keep going back to eyeball on the pen to unlock. No, I'm good. My I, kid, I, uh, I, my kid turned 13, so I got her an I, uh, iPhone 11, uh, for her birthday. And not the pro one, like yeah. Neil, not with the, with Arnold Schwarzenegger cannon on the back. <laughs> nice. Just like the regular one. And, uh, <laughs> she was like, okay, now you can do your face scan. I go, nope. And I was like, I don't want the government doesn't need to see what your retinas look like. You're only 13. <laughs> they also don't leave the device. I know, I'm just being funny, Randy. Allegedly. Alleged, yeah, exactly. Allegedly. Yeah, I'm exactly. sure we would know by now. Yeah, and this Snapchat like deletes year. everything when you say remove right. it. Yeah. And Echo Effects can't get hacked. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Ian wants to let us know that Leisure Suit Larry Bundle is available on Steam. Uh, Has phenomenal. one through seven available. Ooh, I didn't and even. It can't be more than 20 so, bucks. Sort of like I didn't know there was a house party four. Like yeah. There was a Leisure Suit Larry seven. Thank you, Ian. Made my night. $24. Um, and you know what? Uh, you know, so you know, since the church, you know, isn't getting a lot, of, you know, the kids just don't want to go to the oh church no more. Um, uh, how about uh, someone sat around a table and said, "Why don't we get into the uh, the IoT game?" And someone click, said, "Yeah, let's do it." Click to pray is the name of this device, and 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 it's a rosary that you can wear like a bracelet. Click to pray. Click click to pray. Uh, it okay. talks to your phone. So yeah. it's in essence, it's IoT. So when you make the sign of the cross, the motion sensors in the Bracelet actually open the app on your phone and start playing a rosary. That's not real. It is. It really is. Hundred ten dollars. It's on Engadget. Oh yeah, no, it's it's from the Vatican for real. Right. It's 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 a thing. It's uh, the Vatican says the device part of the Pope's worldwide prayer network. Uh, It's a tech based teaching tool for learning how to pray uh, for peace in the world. Do you get points for each time you pray? And the more you, you know, yeah, are they going to gamify prayer? (laughs) (laughs) Um, So hey, but good news. Um, It we're only what? Let's see. This is 2019, almost the end of it. the military is no longer going to use eight inch floppy disks. Dude, uh, I had to read to this. Control nuclear launch sequences. I had to read this <laughs> six times to make sure that it wasn't the onion. <laughs> it, not, not, not five and a quarter, not three and a half, eight inch. No, I wouldn't. The big MSI floppy disks, like from. Like war games. I want to say this again. Hold on. Can we say this again? U.S. military will no longer use floppy disks to coordinate nuke launches. That's terrifying. Released and, last week. No, and then the best part is the undertitle, whatever the whatever what's the subtitle. Yeah. Um, it now has a highly secure solid state digital storage solution. Mm, uh, that makes me nervous. They bought pure storage. Right. <laughs> right. That's all it tells me. <laughs> or they bought Dell EMC. Right. right? Nobody That's... made an eight inch floppy joke. Uh, I, sorry. I had to get a belt just for that. Um, uh, so, actually, we were talking about Star Wars. Uh, one of the things we did not mention is so, if if you are so inclined, uh, so the believe the first showing of the movie, uh, the new movie, is on uh, the 19th at 6 p.m. If you feel like being around fellow nerds uh, for a long, long time, yes, uh, you can start on the 18th yes. uh, in the morning, and for uh, I want to be sure, uh, 27 hours and 21 minutes, yes, they will show all of the Star Wars films. Immediately followed by the new movie. Can my seat be a toilet? Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That it's got, awful. Got to be like the Cartman World hours. of Warcraft. That sounds awfully amazing. Well, I, I, I want to know what <laughs> sequence they're going to show them. Not just what sequence. I want to know what version. I don't want the night. If you're going to show me. I would do oh, that in a second. I think that's you, not sweet. But if you show me OG, OG uh, episode four. They're never going to show. No. It's going to be 97. That's, that's, it's going to be the special edition. Not you toilet. I don't want to go there. Yeah, you, you know it's going to be. which episodes to sleep through or just bring lots of coffee? How do you sleep through any of them? Um, episode one. <laughs> episode one, you totally can't. Just yeah. Agree. The mall scenes are better than any of the other okay, two. Wake me up no. for the pod racing, and then pod the pod racing is so boring. No, the pod racing is totally the best. Dude, part. It, uh, not even for the pod racing, just for well, just just for duel of the fates. Like that's duel of the fates is good. Yeah. That's so good. wake me up for that. Wake me up for uh, mall, and and then we're good. And then two. Um, okay, I'll fall asleep after he kills Dooku. And then wake me Willy up. Willy Wonka's dead. And yeah, and then wake me up 
somewhere around the bondage scenes, like when when Padme starts showing up in the leather gear, wake <laughs> me up around then. Uh, Crying out loud. <laughs> the most I've ever done is. To do it. With Jar Jar Binks, though, did no. you notice? Three movies no. back Nobody to back does. to back. I don't know if I could do this. I can't sit in a single seat for that long. I would lose my mind. I did at Theater Bazaar this weekend. Uh, They're couches. I guess you're right. They're couches. Uh, bring a blankie. So, bring a pillow. So I, so we got to take a bet on which one of our friends' Teslas is going to brick first because the flash memory wears out. Dude, I'm I'm going Neil. <laughs> You're going. Neil um, was our first friend with one. I know, so but he got the nice. He got the, but he got the uh, the fancy one. So I don't know if that gave. Um, so basically, it's that the culprit resides in the flash memory and the media control under the older Tesla vehicles. Um, it basically keeps all the log data, and it doesn't dump it. Yep, and it doesn't archive it, and it doesn't move it into the cloud. It just sits there, um, and the firmware wasn't. It's a big in the beginning, so log data is lots of spare room to play with. And basically, they wrote the workload spread over over all the memory. Yeah, and now it's full. But yeah, now they're logging so much data. There aren't empty sectors available yep. for like fallover or error correction the, or anything. The, the best line is because Tesla is a highly dependent on its electronics. Once the flash memory in an infotainment unit goes bad, it essentially bricks the car. That's amazing. Well, <laughs> dude, shit, the app went down, and what Brick was it? Car. Two weeks ago, and nobody could get into their cars. Yeah. So that was amazing. So and so I, I will, we can wrap up with the from the nobody cares uh, department, um, and also like from back in the day of eight inch floppy disks. Um, Yahoo Groups is winding down. I I didn't even know still Yahoo yeah. Groups. <laughs> I knew Yahoo still existed. Verizon company. I never. I, did you ever do a Yahoo? I don't even know what was Yahoo I Groups. Didn't know that was an option. Mailing with lists. Yahoo. No, no, no. They were mailing lists. It was no, it was message boards. It, it was essentially well, glorified message. Yeah, and, yeah, but there, but yeah. like the good message boards that had the email yeah. component to yeah. it and that kind of stuff. Um, like right as like CompuServe and that kind of stuff was starting to wind down, Yahoo launched groups trying to take its place and and fill that niche and fill that I void. I never did that ever. No, oh, I, I loved message boards. You know that. Oh, I know. Yeah, but yeah. So no, apparently, yeah, and I think it's like what you have like a day left. Uh, they extended it to the 28th to download all your files. So oh, they're I, killing all the features except for the emailing. I, I couldn't What, is imagine. everybody going to move to Reddit, r slash yeah, Yahoo groups? groups? Or, uh, I, who knows? I, who knows? I, I couldn't even begin to tell you what I had out there, and nor do I care. I'm just mad. I was looking up PopCap games because we used to play the shit out of those at Vario. God. And I was, there was this, these two games. One was like a javelin throw, and the other one was uh, poker, piggy okay. poker. And they're both gone. I can't find them. I'm like, <laughs> there's like literally the hours, hours. We could have sold so much crap, but we decided <laughs> we, we have to like have an office tournament on piggy poker. Anyway, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to be back with Marie and Pat from New Spire. This is the IT in the D show. Hey, we'll be right back. IT in the D. Read. Meet. Listen. Networking Detroit. One beer at a time. Hey, this is John Schneider from Nip Tuck Smallville, the haves and the have-nots. Oh, Dr. Quinn, hot in Cleveland. Secret Lives of the American Teenager and just about everything you can possibly imagine. And oh yeah, the Dukes of Hazard. You're listening to Bob and Dave. See IT in the D show. IT in the D dot com. Hey, welcome back. Segment two, episode 320. This is the IT in the D show. Broadcasting live here in Studio One, Podcast Detroit, and beautiful Royal Oak, Michigan. Bob the Sales Guy, Dave the Geek, Randy, I do the Twitters, is doing the Twitters. Find us online, itinthed.com, uh, where you'll find all the things. All right, so nobody, nobody ever in the history of time has ever gone into business because they so want to collect like a sales David Lee Roth song, nobody. Nobody uh, cares. Yeah, God, no, but yeah, no. Um, <laughs> has ever because <laughs> they want to collect sales tax for the government, but it's something we all have to do. Thankfully, Avalara takes the mystery and pain out of the complex process of managing sales tax. Avalara uses the power of the internet and cloud services to automate the tax compliance process for businesses of all sizes, integrating directly with the accounting, e-commerce, point of sale, and marketplace platforms that you're already using. Avalara software automatically calculates the right amount of tax that should be charged for every product in every transaction in real time, and files your sale tax returns wherever and whenever they're due. Selling internationally adds a whole new level of complexity, but Avalara has experts in 15 countries around the world to help you navigate compliance challenges as you grow. Dude, thank God we are not a product-based company um, because like, I remember like even selling tickets for the wrestling stuff. Mm-hmm. Oh, suddenly that became a tax implication that mm-hmm. it had to be dealt with because it's a physical product and yada, yada, yada. I, to- I told you I almost shut down my German club. Yeah. 
You know, and, and, and three events a year, they're selling beer to make money to pay for the damn property tax, and all of a sudden, oh yeah, you guys owe another eight grand. Yep. Like, wait, what? Oh, well, huh? Yeah. Well, it's, you know, like we said, you know, the like the vendors at cons and that kind of stuff, you know, that are selling their stuff, that are trying to do it right, that are collecting sales tax and having to deal with it, you know, with their phone off their Square or their right. Stripe or yeah, just ridiculous. Um. So here's the deal: stop spending valuable time worrying about your sales tax returns and focus on the things you actually love about running your business. Go to avalera.com slash it and the d to learn more about how. Avalara can help you. That's Avalara, A V A L A R A dot com slash I T in the D. Avalara, tax compliance done right. Guys, give it a look. You need to. Yeah, good stuff. Absolutely. So, hey, we are joined by uh, old friends of ours and a new friend. Um, but hey, the team here from New Spire is there, in the house. Are there three people here? No. <laughs> He's- Maria's been here before. He's Pat's new. Pat's Almost, new. She can be two people. So that's oh, yeah, oh well she was telling us she was doing four jobs so yeah, yeah. Thank you, you know you know how it goes hr um but no we got maria graham in the house and pat o'sullivan from new spire networks how are both of you doing always love having you here doing great happy to be here good thanks for having me back love friends. having you back so this is uh i don't know if this is goofy or not but it's Cybersecurity awareness month and there's stuff going on at work, like where they, you know, stop the fish and they're giving away Swedish fish and people are still doing stupid things like making their, you know, service count password one, two, three and getting hit by auditors. Like, or, you know, Equifax, you know, Equifax, admin, admin, admin. 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 So, I mean, when, 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 you know, cybersecurity awareness month, like, you know, oh, by the way, my father, um, double clicked uh, an attachment in an email, shut his computer down, call an 800 number on the phone for two hours with this person. My dad gave them the, Credit card. Luckily, my mother was smart enough to call immediately and cancel the credit card. And I, I chew my dad out for an hour, and he goes, "Who told you?" And I'm like, "My wife told me." Because <laughs> was she not supposed? To? He didn't want me to yell at him. Why um, is your dad still running a Windows PC? No, because he doesn't know how to load Ubuntu. Randy, no, I mean, like, give him a Chromebook or something. That oh, my, I got my mom a Chromebook, but he likes his desktop anyway. Um. So, I mean, going back to like Cybersecurity Awareness Month, it seems like no matter how hard we try, it seems like these things still happen. I mean, what are, what, what are you guys doing and what can we do to like, you know, make people aware to not do that stuff? Well, it's really interesting. So we talk to, we're, well, we're in the sales side, right? So we talk to people all day, every day. And, um, when we start talking in, you know, discovery and what's going on and what's your biggest challenge. And it's always my people, my people, my people. I'm paying all this money for, these platforms, really good platforms, know before and things like that. And, uh, there's not adoption and there's not, uh, buy-in from, you know, executive leadership teams or things of that nature. And, and that's the first thing, right? They've got to, you got to start with that. You got to start with your people. And if, uh, you're not going to get buy-in at the higher level, you got to figure out how to do that, I think. So what you're saying is, and internally, they need to have a salesperson to sell internally. Amazing. Oh, maybe. Amazing. I know, right? I see what, you're ah! I see what you did there, Bob. I did. I, I did. like it. Yes, yes. That's the biggest. That's the biggest challenge that I hear. I think day in day, day in and day out is is uh, it, it all comes back down to the user. And you can buy all the best tools and platforms that are out there, but if you can't teach, people still click things. Yeah. They still open up the emails. They still open up the attachments. So here's the thing, though those those, those emails are are utter shite. When when we all know that they're that what they are the, oh, the, the fishing test yes, yes yes they're 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 bad some of them write good ones where you like they get the domain i think neil did a good one where he bought like your company's it department yeah. or some mm-hmm. stupid url like that and then <laughs> shot like a you know and he got like they got like 14 people out of 500 to like update their password through it and it was like ah so i mean you know again i'm like security awareness i mean i guess where do you start and how do you stop that? I, I guess it's, it'll never stop it. But, you I mean, can't. are you doing this monthly, biweekly? That. Do you do yeah, it it's random? A, it's ongoing. Is there it's just mitigation of it's, risk at this point, I would think? Yeah, I, I think so, too. But I think that there's got to be enough of somebody that has the authority to say, no, I'm serious. You do this and you learn this and you take it seriously. Because if you don't, you're exposing a huge risk to our business. So you need to be aware. There's no repercussions, though, for, you know, Timmy and accounting that – that clicked that password reset. He didn't even get his hand slapped. They just like I know. you. Sh- you made the list. Great. I know. And then now you have to sit down and watch this video. Right, 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 yeah. right. Yeah. 
Get, well, do, or like 10 videos or whatever. Yeah. So no, it's, it's an ongoing battle. So then you have to have, you know, you gotta, you gotta take it from there, right? It starts with user awareness and it doesn't stop there. You have to continue that. You can't just do it once a quarter, once a year. You can't do it this month only and then hope that that's going to resonate with the people because it just well, won't. Well, because are you people only are hiring people busy. this month? No. Yeah. Right. It's got to continue. Yeah. It's got to be still gonna be busy. Process. They're still going to be rushing through their work. They're still going to be clicking on things and opening things. Um, you know, and so it has to be for, for, for front of mind, but you also have to do more because people are, no matter how much training you do, people are still going to click. They're still going to look. You have to watch. You have to, you know, you have to be seeing what they're doing. You have to be paying attention. You have to have eyes on because um, training isn't enough. I mean, because if you look at it, I remember having a conversation. I think I brought this up a few times of a CISO of a pretty large company that everybody would know. And he goes, man, he goes, 70% of my budget is, is firewalls and VPN licenses. And he goes, and, and, and IDS is IDPs. And then he goes, 20% is maybe doing, you know, buying a proof point or, or getting, you know, some sort of LDP or, you know, um, data loss prevention, DLP, sorry, DLP. And then, I got like 10% to do stuff that I want to do. So, I, I, you know, everybody's like, while security is important, everybody's crunched by the almighty budget dollar, mm-hmm. you know, so you got to go on the cheap and then, and then what? You know what I mean? So I think both, both sides are accountable. Yep. And then your phishing yeah. emails look like crap. Right, right, right. right. Yep. Well, I'm just saying, you, you can't really, you can't right. really get too mad at Timmy in accounting when you haven't done shit either. Right. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, and it's also spending the money wisely, right? So there's a lot of things that you can do for teaching user awareness. Like, I think it's unique that your work is sending out, they're doing a more of a social campaign, right? Like, just making you aware. They're not making you sit down and watch videos because no offense, like, I hate watching the videos. I work for a cyber company. Nobody, nobody <laughs> enjoys it. the freaking worst. Nobody. Like, I hate it. But, like, if you can do something fun just to keep me like, hey, this is a thing. Don't right. screw up. It's important. That. So you get like by us if you leave your laptop unlocked. Do I walk? No, when you walk away, if security sees it, they basically shame you and they change your wallpaper to me like you got you know. Oh, that happens. They'll turn. They do the thing. Like I'm in sales. I don't even know how they mm-hmm. do this. Like I've done that twice, I think, in 10 years at New Spire. They'll turn your whole stuff upside down. Oh, the c- <laughs> control like, arrow key. Yeah. Thank you. How do I reverse it? That's more of what I need you to used, know. It's, I think it's control alt arrow key. Actually. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Critical knowledge for me that <laughs> most I people, they get, if security doesn't <laughs> catch someone on our floor, they get hassle hoffed. Yeah, like the, the ladies, like horizontal playboy pose like that Ooh. one. Yeah. That's the wallpaper. Ooh, nice. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nice. You're hiring, right? Uh, yes, every day. <laughs> no, so he just leaves his so shit like, open all day. Right. <laughs> he actually just leaves one laptop open all day that he right. does nothing with and right. does all his work on the other one. Yeah. yeah, well, there's like tons of things, right? So you can start with the training, but then, you know, there's a lot of people that are going, they're skipping the training because they feel like it's not effective or they do it once a year. And then they spend a fortune on point solutions that aren't integrated. Right. And, you know, at the end of the day, they, they spend a, a ton of money with a bunch of point solutions and they're not in a ton of time and a ton of time and they can't, they still don't know what the heck's going on. They don't, I don't think anyone, they like, don't know what they're doing. So, um, and it's no fault of anybody's. It's just, here's gaps. Let's fill them with some tech and then, okay, now the tech's making noise and now what do we do with the noise? And now we're igno- ignoring the noise and now our people aren't, now our people aren't trained and now the fishing's happening and this caught the fishing, but we didn't catch it because we have 40 other point solutions. Right. That are and now helping. I just need somebody to build me a dashboard. Yeah. Then, now I need yeah. a dashboard, but now I've got 47 dashboards and it's, it's, uh, and it's tough. And that's quite common. We're seeing that a lot, actually. Yeah. So what's the, uh, is there an answer or is it just, just keep doing, keep doing? I don't, you know, I'm just. Well, I think there's always going to be a little bit of that, right? We have to keep layering security, but there is an answer. There's a, I mean, there's a few ways we can do it. The biggest thing is to get some help. Get some help from people who know what they're doing. Get some people who can actually pay attention, um, who can look at the tools you've got in place, who can look at what's going on in your network, um, and and spend that money on those types of resources rather than continuing to invest hundreds of thousands of dollars in new point solutions or in new staff to to watch. And well, how do you, I, I guess here's the thing: you got security vendors coming, you know, out of the woodworks. How do you know? How do I guess? How do you trust that they're not glue sniffers building model airplanes? You know what I mean? There's, yeah, no, I agree. I think <laughs> that's a saying. good point. No, I think a a better thing to do would be to slow the heck down, and instead of realizing that you've got gaps everywhere and filling the gaps, figure out a strategic approach to fill the gaps, right? So like, instead of buying this tool that's going to do this and this tool that's going to do this, and oh, by the way, both of these tools have this overlapping functionality, really like slow down before you start pulling the trigger on some of that stuff and think about an integrated approach. 
Um, that's also going to tie into your capability to manage that approach or figure out what you can and cannot manage and figure out where you need to hire more people or maybe partner with some strategic people. And um, don't stop the user training because that's, again, going to be the sure. most important thing, right? So you have to have an integrated approach. You have to figure out what tools are going to talk to which tools. You have to figure out what those gaps are. Please don't start spending money on pen testing for no reason. Like if you know there's gaps, you know your users aren't getting trained and you know your IDS is set up poorly and you know you have these don't spend money on a pen test that's not going to work we hear that a lot too but um, sometimes like but and just you know but yeah. but sometimes don't you have to to be able to check the box and said yes we did a pen test you do yes, you do a- have to do that to check the box certainly for depending on your industry right but, yeah but as a solution to oh fixing, yeah um, we hear a lot too. That's just the new, it's, I think it's not new, but it's something that is starting to, to gain weight a lot, especially in like some of the, the mid market and maybe mm-hmm. unregulated industries where they don't have to do that, but they talk to other people that are regulated. Oh, go get a pen test. Well, why are you going to test something, you know, is broken? That right. doesn't really make sense. Why don't you, why don't you, uh, you know, it's like a leaky dam, right? Don't, don't try to you patch the hole yeah. before you try to break through the hole, right? Um, and then once you figure out where those gaps are, nobody's pe- making a stick a finger in the dike joke. Oh, I just, I, 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 knew you, I knew he was. I saw it in his face. Tried I so did. hard not to. I did. Thank my you. eyes opened up like Johnny Cash. I look at Randy. I'm like, oh my god. I, I, I'm sorry. And you're allowed to do that. It's fine. It's fine. Um, but so you know, you just got to take an integrated approach <laughs> to the whole thing, and then you got to figure out what you can and cannot do yourself. That's it, right? So, figure out, find some strategic partners, figure out what makes sense to manage internally, figure out what doesn't, but make sure from at the end of the day, spending a ton of money on cyber tool after cyber tool after cyber tool, and then you have a whole stack of stuff that's creating nothing but noise. Well, yeah, that's probably not integrated. That, that's you not know, integrated. Ha- yeah. It doesn't make any sense. You got to be strategic about it, and. At, you know, and so figuring out how to do that. So sometimes instead of just pulling the trigger, it's hard. And I'm in sales, like the worst, it's the worst when I get under one of those conversations and I'm like, oh my God, I could tell you all the things right now, but I'm not going to, you need right. to slow down. Like I need you to slow down because what you're doing isn't going to work. And I, you know, this is why, right? Cause you, you're talking about this tool, you're talking about this tool, you're talking about all these different things. And then you know, you've all oh, PS, you've got an IT staff of 20 uh, for X billion amount of users or right. whatever. This isn't going to work for you to manage. So let's figure out a better strategic way to integrate the stuff and make it so that, you know, we can be successful at the end of it. And that I think is, is the challenge that we're coming into now. Cause there's just, I mean, you look at the freaking you know, the LinkedIn, the infographic, we've all seen oh, it's it awful. Right? Yeah. with the awful. security vendors. The eye like, chart. Yeah. yeah like oh, nobody yeah. even like you, my shoe hurts and I've got 47 security <laughs> vendors for it. Like I don't need, mm. my shoe doesn't hurt. It's very comfortable, but you know what I'm saying? Like there's so many options out there and these people, people are, it, it's tough. So, so, yeah, I mean, I keep hearing over and over that the trend seems to be moving towards simplicity. Um, you kind of alluded to it. Um, I, I guess, are you seeing it too? And, and, and I guess to what degree? Cause, you know, when you say that, that's a very loose term. Um, but then you know, I'm hearing this and, you know, it kind of coincides with everything I'm hearing as well. Yeah. Um, I think that what I hear more is it's too complex, right? So it's a complex landscape right now. And the, and the people that I talk to, ha- it's too complex for them to deal with. What I meant was simplicity, meaning we're just going to take it and just strip everything away. Yes. And we're going to, we're going to, like the strategies from an end user. Yes. Are, are just, you know, going to more, more simpler route than, mm-hmm. than stacking all these vendors on top of each other. Um, yeah, I think that, or I, th- so yes, I do think stripping it back and, and finding a, um, well, I, I guess there's a couple of different ways to look at it. It depends on who you're talking to. Um, larger scale organizations are going to take a different approach than more of the middle market, right? Um, so for the larger scale, I think that what I've found is everybody's going towards single vendor, single platform. It doesn't matter who it is. It doesn't matter what it is. And once they buy into one piece of it, if they like it, they're going to buy the whole thing, which is good as long as they have the people to manage it. Um smaller enterprise to higher end mid market and mid market they're they're still in in my experience from from the conversations we're having we've got a lot of people that have just bought and layered on a ton of different tools a ton of different applications a ton of different dashboards and um they can't do it like they're like i got all this stuff but i have no visibility yeah. and it's confusing to me is how you don't have the visibility oh. and it's 
time and resources. They don't yeah. have the time and resources to deal with it. Well, yeah, I guess that brings up a point that I wanted to, I wanted to ask you. You guys do always have done really well with small business. And I could tell a couple stories from just this past year where one, um, it was an insider theft scenario, mm-hmm. uh, cost them about a million and a half in legal fees. Never implemented any solution to curtail that in the future. Another one, you know, basically got ransomware. Um, never did anything to stop in the future. Is like here's the thing: they're getting burned. You know, it's kind of like if you get your car stolen, you might get a low jack next. You know what I mean? Yeah. And go. I don't, don't want to deal with this crap again. You know what I mean? You just go buy something, or you, well, you know. and some of it comes down to you know where's you know what, what's a what's your risk tolerance, and b where's the cost benefit? Exactly. Like if if okay, the ransomware is they want two hundred thousand dollars, and it's going to cost me thirty grand to replace everything. All right, everything just got lit on fire, and I'm just replacing everything. Right. You know, we yeah. saw we saw that happen with a couple of universities this year with the stories we were yeah. talking about. Yeah, the library or whatever. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um. Well, I think that. It is, it's always a risk, it's a risk tolerance equation, always, right? And so, um, it depends on who you're talking to, right? Um, I think that providing people with a narrative when they're going internally, cause it's not like I'm never gonna talk to a CISO that got burned. And we're not, we, we've done very well in the SMB, but we've moved a little bit upstream to more higher end mid market and some, some low end enterprise type of, of, um, engagements and, and, um, target market in the last two years, but, you're never going to talk to a, a CISO that got burned and is like, I'm okay with it. That's, right. that's not like, like <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh, you still have a job? Nothing. That's exciting. Well, I wouldn't wish their job on anyone no, when they do get burned because like awful. how many people called Borg Warner right. the morning after the, whatever that guy that yes. got caught in Iraq? I don't I remember the whole story. I wouldn't wish their job on anyone no. if they didn't get burned. They have a target it's, on their back. Well, yeah, didn't yeah. We just, that too. <laughs> isn't the uh, average length, what was it, 18 months? Yeah. Of a CISO. Yeah. 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 It's, it's very short. Um, but it's not about the CISO though. It's not that they don't want to do it. It's about helping them create the narrative to sell internally with the risk, with the risk, right? Like, sure. um, like you said, it's like you need a salesperson. Mm-hmm. You and need one. You need a salesperson yeah. Yeah. on the inside. And so, um, I, f- I found that's a big challenge for a lot of them too, is translating the, the risk equation and translating the, you know, what they know needs to happen on the IT side into business language that the, the board can actually adopt and understand and, and resonate with. You know, they, they're speaking in business terms and a lot of times translating that is a major challenge. Um, but, uh, um, you know, I think that, uh, a lot of it is just, you have to pay attention and you have to, you have to be aware of what's happening. You have to train your users. You have to be constantly evolving because the landscape is constantly evolving. I mean, right. Every day there's new things happening and changing. Yeah, like 10 years ago, if you were going to tell me ransomware was going to hit every 14 seconds mm-hmm. and it would take four minutes That's to hack an IoT stat. a device, it's literally, it's 14 seconds every every day, 14 seconds ransomware is hitting somewhere. And I think it's... Right if it's now, gotten it's, to the point where it's hitting my father's computer, right. you know it's... <laughs> it's everywhere. Yeah. I'm it's, just saying. It's everywhere. everywhere. Right. It's ridiculous. Um, and so it's... It's, I think more and more people are understanding, and I think it's our job in the cybersecurity. And we're not a point solution. We're a managed security service provider. So I think the largest part of my job is not – I don't have to sell a CISO my service. There's value there. They get it, right? But I have to help them. I become their – I'm the salesperson on the inside. Like, how do sure. I help you um, be successful, and, and what can I do for that? And so that's um, probably, you know, where, where New Spire is – been very successful is, is kind of trying to crack that code and help people be successful in getting their, their projects message across. Well, we always, always like hearing across. we always like hearing people that are hiring, yeah, especially like go. yeah, the magnitude of what you guys <laughs> 50, are hiring. Fifty, fifty jobs. Oh, wow. I got fifty yeah. open yeah, positions I, across we're, sales. We're growing. It's good. We That's, jumped. It's a good problem to have. It's a good problem to have. We jumped. Um, we're number twenty-seven on the MSSP list right yeah. now. That's up like twenty-five spots from God, last year. I remember year. when you guys were little kids. Do you? I know. Yeah. I, I, I we're all grown up. I was I a know. little kid <laughs> the first time. I was scared of you the first time. I was like, oh my gosh, he's such. He says such foul language. He's so manly. What do I do? <laughs> I'm pretty sure she never said that. <laughs> I didn't. I'm, I'm I didn't say sure. that. I was probably dropping f bombs with them. But um, <laughs> no. But yeah, we've got 50 open positions. The majority of those are going to be in like um, the security engineering and the 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 sim and sac analysis and t- and stuff like that. But anybody throwing out a throwing out a wishbone here because I'm a salesperson. But we're hiring. We got a ton of sales positions open too. So hit us up. 
Yeah. That's insane. Good. I just had to give this guy $250 spiff. I split my, my referral fee with him Ooh. for the last candidate he sent me. Oh, nice. So if you know people, send them to me. We have bonuses. <laughs> what else is going on? Yeah, I heard her I, deal. I guess what else is going on without, you know. What else is going on? Oh, my goodness. So many things. We um, Oh, Secure World. How uh, We well, were supposed to see you at Secure World. I really I didn't. missed you guys there. I was really sad I didn't get to see you. It was good. It was a good show. And it was such a chaotic week. Mother of God. I know. Yeah. I, that's what he said. I was texting him. But um, no, it was a, it was a good show. Uh, there was a lot of, a lot of traffic. Uh, topics were good. We had a panel. We had a couple of really good friends that were there. So that was fun. It was a good show. Yes. Good. It always usually is. Yeah, it was in a new venue this year, which was different. It was at Co. Well, it's not. How Kobo. is Kobo? It's not Kobo anymore. What is it now? Kobo. Yeah. It's Kobo. Yeah, I know. I, I know. know. It's always Kobo. The people mover just says convention center. Yeah. You know? Well, it's all confusing now because none of the it's maps. It's Arbor Drugs. The maps don't know where to send you when <laughs> right. you put them. It's very confusing. No, it was good. Um, not calling it Chemical Bank Wasn't it, uh, wasn't yeah. it there last year? No, no. It was over the, the one that you're thinking of, the uh, state of Michigan one with the, the CIO. CISO, the Advanta. No, not even. No. Advanta was at Detroit Science Center. No, so last year it was at Kobo. No, there was, yeah, I was going to say, because there was the one was the we Michigan did. Michigan, it was the Cybersecurity Summit. So that was, that was the one that Snyder's. we did, and Brennan was there. Yes. But there was the other one we did. Oh, oh, that was CBI's. Oh, that was, uh, no, 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 uh, B-Sides, or that was one of those two. Was it B? Oh, okay. Yeah, because it was at the second floor. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's that what was, I'm thinking of. Okay. It was B-Sides, or it was one of the other, the two of them that are always back-to-back. At um, Kobo? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, t- whatever it's called. Yeah. Anyways, it caused Probably confusion not. for me. Up. He's just throwing. Now I'm all screwed up. <laughs> right. <laughs> Shoot. No, so that was good. Um, what else have we been doing? We we just finished a, a overhaul in our security operations center. It looks awesome. Oh yeah, completely remodeled. It's cool. Awesome. It looks kind of kind of space age now. Yeah, it's really fun. <laughs> Coming from, I was baby, so it was not that. Right. And now <laughs> it's that. We well, need almost an fun. AV designer because it's all like the fancy TV. Yeah, like I'm like, oh my, I don't even know. I'm like texting my old time clients from eight years ago, like, check out our sock now. I know you were here a while ago. Like, well, when we just started, now. we had what, five employees? No, it was a long time <laughs> 20? ago. 20? Yeah, it was a small company, but we're growing and we're doing, it's fun. It's a fun place to be. The culture's cool um, and we're going places, so it's yeah, it's I've, been really exciting. I've been there a year and a half, and it's been wild just the the ride in that short time. How quickly well, we've grown! And I say I called on you guys back in like '08 when I was at HP. That's yep. when I first started uh, talking to Dan. Dan, oh wow, yeah, and uh, yeah, so that, that's 11 years ago. Oh my god! <laughs> uh, but yeah, you guys are little little little, 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 little guys. Yeah, exactly <laughs> going to the junior high dance. <laughs> <laughs> Doing the uh, the slow dance where your arms are fully yeah. extended, yeah, yeah. No, now, it's fun. Now you guys are, up. yeah. Now you're getting our prayer it's points. Fun. We've got a couple of we've got security operations centers in uh, in Denver and in Cincinnati now. So we've got a couple of different offices that are well staffed. It's not just in commerce. So good for you guys. It's fun. So it's where good. do we send people to find out more? Uh, go to well. Go to careers at newspire dot com probably, and that's N U Spire, not yep. N E W. That's right. Did you buy N E W Spire just to get? Just you know, in case? I really should. I probably we should do that. Actually, we should do that. Yeah. Yeah. I get a referral fee for that one too. You're uh, always, yeah, we're gonna hook N-U. you up. Dan's N-U. gonna pay you. Branding. Yes. Dan, no, Dan's gonna pay the you. Site cannot be reached. The strategy exist, officer. <laughs> N E W is available. Uh, well, just as it can't be reached, it's not like then. That means it's available. Or... Uh, but hey, yeah, Newspire, N-U, Spire.com. Uh, definitely check out 50 Jobs. That sounds uh, pretty amazing. Uh, we'll, I'll definitely send a few people your way. Um, hey, we're going to wrap things up. This episode 320 of the IT and the D Show. We'd like to thank our guests, Marie and Pat from Newspire. I'd like to thank our uh, sponsors, Zapier and Avalara. Thank you for keeping the lights on. On behalf of uh, Bob, Dave, and Randy. And oh, by the way, I saw Nuri yesterday. He says hello to say hello to everybody uh-huh. in the podcast sphere. Uh, on behalf of all of us, drink up your drinks, get your phone numbers. You don't got to go home. You just got to get the hell out of here. See you next week. Drive careful. Beat it. See you guys. The emergency destruct system is now activated. Hold on. What is best in life? To crush your enemies, see them driven before you, and to hear the lamentation of the women. Long live Flash. You've saved your life. Have a nice day. I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass. And I'm all out of bubblegum. Nice shooting, son. What's your name? Murphy. Make the run. The run. The run. Game over, man. Game over. It's over, Johnny. It's over.
Nothing is over. Nothing. You just don't turn it off. I just, I can't say no, and I don't really want to, so. Well, especially with the back doors open. Yo, hold up. Time out. Time out. Y'all take a chill. You need to cool that shit out. And that's the double truth. Ruth. Bob loves it in the camp. I hope this was as much fun for you as it was for me. That's why I like it in the can. Joe owns the trees. Owns. 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 Bear me. <laughs> My job is to make sure this program is morally upright and cultural and wholesome. Shut up, Mimsy. Shut up, Mimsy. Shut up, Mimsy. Why would, like... Buick put their cars next to like the Bentleys. Like, why is this not marketing? Um, the alphabet. <laughs> <laughs> it's brilliant. <laughs> yeah, I can't take that position. That analogy yeah. sucks because it's right. Because you're getting your eight track tuned up. <laughs> Are we at a break yet? No! Yeah, so now I'm just like doing like stupid stuff to make me laugh. Venture capital is not the end game. When are we going to talk about me? Jane, you ignorant slut. It's my show. I can say what I want. Kiss my ass. (laughs) Go home. (laughs) Unplug. (laughs) Get off the goddamn internet. You are everything that is wrong with the internet right now. You're so white right now. (laughs) I'm the whitest guy in the room. Just explain it to me. (laughs) Show now. I love this city. I was banging on the wang. Really? Should we talk about this? Tag team. (laughs) Should we keep going or should I stop? Can I just say, it's been great being on a show that talks about Mickey Rooney dying for 20 seconds and then poop for 10 minutes.